Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. I am back with yet another buy guide video today where I will be talking about the best smartphones you can get under 35,000 rupees here in Nepal or some 20,000 rupees in India or some $300 in the international market right now. This price category, as you know, has always been the crowd puller and is known for bringing the best set of features from the premium mid-range territory to a more affordable market like an AMOLED display, um, higher refresh rate, versatile camera setup, faster charging speeds and more. And in 2022, we already have a bunch of devices that bring these features to the table. Starting with the pro performance phone on this list, the Realme 9 SE, also known as the Speed Edition. It is powered by a soft flagship Snapdragon 778G chipset, so everything from opening apps to multitasking between them feels fast and responsive here. But something that's jaw-droppingly impressive about this phone is how well Realme has optimized it for gaming. I mean, even the most graphics-hungry title like uh, Genshin Impact is smoothly playable at its highest graphic settings with 60 FPS mode turned on. To be fair, we were only able to get an average of 40 FPS, but just look at the FPS stability it achieved on our test, 99%. That's really, really good for a phone in this price range. This uh, well-optimized performance is complemented by a fluid 144Hz refresh rate that further enhances your gameplay experience. Moreover, the Realme 9 SE also has a premium look and feel with an excellent weight distribution throughout the chassis. The slight curves at the back contribute to a comfortable grip as well. On the other hand, it can capture decent, if not great, photos under favorable lighting conditions. I uh, compared its cameras against the Realme 9 Pro and found that the images tend to come off a bit sharper on the 9 SE, whereas the HDR processing on the 9 Pro fails to maintain highlights and shadows in some instances. The Realme 9 SE, however, lacks an ultra-wide-angle sensor, which is present in almost all the phones under 20,000 price segment in India. But Regardless of its camera capabilities, if you're in the market for a gaming phone, the Realme 9 Speed Edition is a no-brainer, with the Realme 9 Pro also being a good phone in its own right. But the one thing that I really dislike about both these phones is the amount of pre-installed bloatware apps and spammy notifications that pop up every now and then. This is why we also have the Moto G71 on this list. Motorola phones have always been known for their clean software experience and uh, this one's no exception. Plus, the Snapdragon 695 chipset packed inside delivers a swift day-to-day -day experience as well. On the other hand, gaming is pretty stable here under relatively less demanding titles like PUBG and Call of Duty Mobile. Oh, and how can I forget about its battery life, which is probably the best in class. On my casual usage, I was able to get 9 to 10 hours of screen on time, which is quite impressive. Apart from this, the Moto G71 has a color and contrast-rich AMOLED panel and an attractive design. However, it does fall short in the camera department. You can take some decent daytime photos in good lighting conditions, but uh, generally they come out with low contrast. Similarly, the ultra-wide-angle images don't preserve much detail, while the selfie camera is not all that great, yielding just average images. Also, do note that the Moto G71 still runs on last year's Android 11, and Motorola has pledged for just one year of platform upgrade here. But it's still a good option for those who want a no-nonsense smartphone with a clean, hassle-free software experience. Alright, if up-to-date software experience with a good number of guaranteed OS updates is right on the top of your list, then you should probably check out the new Galaxy M33 instead. Unlike the Moto G71, it boots on the latest Android 12 and Samsung has even promised two generations of Android upgrades and four years of security badges here. That's something unheard of in this price range. Moreover, powering this phone is the company's in-house Exynos 1285 NM chipset, whose performance is comparable to that of the Snapdragon 695. Therefore, the Galaxy M33 is a capable day-to-day -day performer, and Samsung has made sure to optimize the 120Hz refresh rate for fluid navigation across the UI. For instance, PUBG is smoothly playable at HD graphics and high frame rates, whereas Call of Duty renders lack-free gameplay under medium graphics and very high frame rate settings. 
However, for gaming, it's not a good option as uh, popular games like PUBG and Call of Duty cannot hit 60 FPS. It's not a chipset constraint by any means because the Xenos 1280 has powerful Cortex A76 and A55 cores. So what's missing here is proper gaming optimization. Anyway, the Galaxy M33 can take good photos with nice color and contrast as well and is much better than the competition. Then again, the major letdown here from a name like Samsung comes in the display front since the Galaxy M33 flaunts a TFT LCD panel. In all fairness, this is um, not a terribly bad screen, but since we've seen Samsung include an AMOLED screen in its prior mid-range phones, it was only natural to expect a vibrant AMOLED display in the Galaxy M33 as well. Thankfully, it is Wide One L1 certified, which means you can enjoy content in full HD resolution on streaming platforms. And Samsung has stopped in a big 6,000 mAh battery that delivers an impressive 8 to 9 hours of screen on time on average. Okay, moving on, the Redmi Note 11 Pro is yet another strong contender in the mid-range price bracket. Contrary to all other entries in this price range, this is a 4G phone. But um, if you ask me, 4G handsets still offer a good value for money without compromising much on the overall specifications. Here you get a 6.43 inches AMOLED panel with a 120Hz refresh rate which delivers excellent colors, thus making for a good multimedia consumption device. And I also love the fact that this display is complemented by a set of high-res audio certified stereo speakers whose output is pretty decent for binging movies and such. In terms of performance, the Redmi Note 11 Pro is powered by MediaTek's Helio G96. While it is not quite as powerful as the Snapdragon 695 or the Snapdragon 778G, it is still a capable performer for your everyday chores like web surfing, multitasking, and even casual gaming. Apart from that, the phone has a fairly big 5000 mAh battery that supports 67 watt fast charging. And Xiaomi has even included a compatible charger inside the box, unlike Samsung, who wants you to buy a charger separately. Nevertheless, if you're looking for a similar set of features at an even lower price, then you should check out the Redmi Note 11 S 4G instead. Except for the charging speed and the refresh rate, these two phones bear near identical specs. Okay, now we have reached the end of this list and if I had to pick my favorite mid-range phone right now, it would definitely be the Poco X4 Pro 5G. First off, it has the best display you can get in this price range, which I would say is uh, even on par with some premium mid-range phones. And it's been paired with a really good set of stereo speakers that offers a balanced sound quality. Likewise, with a 120Hz refresh rate and 360Hz start sampling rate, everything is pretty fast, fluid, and responsive here, be it navigating through the UI or when you're gaming. The Poco X4 Pro also has a decent set of cameras, although it is not as reliable as the Galaxy M33. In uh, most of our tests, the latter came out victorious in terms of colors and contrast. The Galaxy M33 wins in portraits too, with better skin tone and background blur over the Poco X4 Pro. Anyway, just like the Redmi Note 11 Pro, it also ships with a 67 watt fast charger inside the box that tops up the phone from 0 to 100% in just 50 minutes. It uh, scores well in terms of design and build quality too. Here, this big camera island on the back may not be everyone's cup of tea, but Poco has offered a glass sandwich design that feels comparatively premium in the hands. Oh, and this is the same as the Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G, which is a couple of thousands more expensive. So yeah, the Poco X4 Pro is certainly a killer value for money. So there you have it guys, my top picks for the best phones under 20,000 Indian rupees or some 35,000 rupees in Nepal. We are coming up with a bunch of other buy guides and exciting videos too, so do subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Saying this, I am Pratima and I will see you soon in my next video.